This episode of Live Incorporate is brought to you by Blind. Blind is a safe, trusted community of more than 5 million verified professionals. Head over to teamblind.com to get the latest insights into salaries, company reviews, and interview experiences at thousands of companies worldwide. La, la, la. La, 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 la. Nothing right. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. So, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, my thing is this you can't tell me nothing about my life. You can't tell me nothing about my life, right? You can't tell me about the life I've lived. You can't tell me about my experience. And as a black woman living in America in 2022, And I'm recording this episode today, hi, on July 9th, uh, you know, um, 2022. You can't tell me nothing about my experience and how my experience has shaped my views. And you also can't tell me nothing about how the history of this country, how the way economics works, the way science works, the way facts works, the way math works, the way human beings work, the way we see and constantly see how our government works. You can't tell me nothing. Number one, um, welcome, welcome, welcome to when white people have had enough. And that is not a typo. And um, if you call it Ebonics, you are anti-black, unless you're saying it in a funny way. Uh, But um, anyway, uh, enough, E-N-U-F, is a very, very specific Um, very honorable, very respectful, very humble nod to the uh, beloved, beloved um, Ntozake Shange, who wrote the poem uh, that turned into a play and it won, I think it's the most uh, awarded play, I think, in history. Um, But it's for colored girls who uh, consider suicide when the rainbow is enough. And, um, it's all about, uh, the experience of women and girls in this country. And so when Roe v. Wade was allowed to be overturned by white women specifically, it just, I, I had to ask the question when white people have had enough, this is what y'all going to do. And I really think that, you know, there's more chance for white men who are in leadership to actually step up to, and do something than the Karens of the world. And, um, you know, uh, because the, the Coons and the Karens, they the ones that got us going down the wrong track. And I have a whole nother series that is going to be on Coons and Karens and corporate. Uh, and, and that is, you know, um, where I'm going to talk about the pieces in my book, because I actually have uh, about eight specific, very specific stories that took place over the last 20 years of my career, actually the last 22 years, not counting 2022, because I'm a free person. Uh, I was fortunately able to retire from corporate America in 2021 and I decided to bet on myself. And so, um, you know, I didn't retire with no package or no whole bunch of money. That's for damn sure. I just left, uh, because my mental health was more important and I needed to just get the hell out. And I was like, I just don't care anymore about these companies because no company cares about us. And so I'm betting on myself. And this is just one of those endeavors, but this specific podcast, y'all, this specific podcast, podcast when white people have had enough is all about what I believe to be you know the actions necessary to turn shit around because I know that where we are is not like a place that we are stuck we are not hopeless and we not helpless but it seems like it because white people right because of their what we have I guess titled it fragility and their virility, you know, if I'm taking from Resma Menachem, right, talking about his his terminology, but white people, they a bunch of punks, and I'm gonna say that in the most loving way. And for those of you who um, get me, and as you learn me and learn who I am, you'll know what I mean when I say y'all a bunch of punks. Y'all's a bunch of punks. Y'all's a bunch of punk ass. 
people, punk ass bitches, as as some of my comedian uh, icons that I like would say. Okay, punk ass bitches, punk ass bitches. That expression, in my term, the way I'm saying it means y'all are weak. Y'all are weak in the knees. There's this amazing, a whole bunch of amazing black creators on TikTok, and literally, once I get my um other uh people onboarded onto my team, and I have my person, my uh person that's my social media person. Uh, they can split their 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 job and one person can just help me with the videos and I get back on TikTok. There's some amazing black creators on TikTok who I love, but I'm going to be able to kind of get back on TikTok and spend like, you know, a half hour a day and like, boom, that's my, my dedicated TikTok time. But anyway, there's brilliant creators on TikTok and there's one woman, she did this whole thing and she's like, y'all need to stand up because y'all weak in the knees. Y'all weak in the knees. And the way that white people especially so-called white liberals. And I guess that's kind of who I'm talking to, how y'all done let Roe v. Wade get overturned and y'all haven't turned the whole shit upside down. Y'all haven't burnt this motherfucker down over Roe v. Wade. That means that we are back into 1776, 1775, 1774, and we's going backwards. I want y'all to get your freaking copy of the constitution and read that shit and look at the people and who they was. That's where we are. Now y'all done let half of us have no rights. And so I'm, my question is, when are white people, uh, when y'all have had enough, okay? So Ntosake Shange, in her play, in her poems, right, she talks about, you know, the horror and the pain, right, that women and children are experiencing in this company, country at the hands of rape and and misogyny and, and and just for capitalism just because men are just gross people who don't know how to you know keep their dick in their pants you know in some cases and then they get in charge and then when women get in charge they go along with it instead of us taking our 52 percent of the power and saying no we're not going to allow that because i'm gonna tell you what I, I, I've I known since the first time I was molested as a child that if I was queen of the goddamn world, that if any molesters was was out there molesting, dicks was getting chopped off, plain and simple. And that's why men don't want women in charge of shit, because that's your worst nightmare. So let's fast forward that, right? Um, My little Lorena Bobbitt moment and think, why is it that women are not safe? And why is it now that women are not even safe to make a choice about bringing another human being into the world, no matter how they get forced into bringing that human into the world? Are you kidding me? And there's 10 year old children trying to get abortions and judges are telling them, get used to being pregnant. And this is women. And this is y'all okay with it. So when white people have had enough and, 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 you know, y'all going to be happy with lines of, of, of seeing pregnant white teenagers that's 10 and 11 with baby faces looking like your kids who is raping these 10 year olds. And if they're getting pregnant by 10 year old boys, who is not teaching their 10 year old boy, keep your hands to yourself and keep your penis in your pants. So here's my question. When will y'all have had enough? So I started off with some Kanye. Can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing because nobody owns my mouth. And then I found out that, hey, on podcast, you can say it and do whatever the hell you want. Because I'm saying, how the hell is Joe Rogan, you know, being him and and whatever. So guess what? So I'm not your token. And this episode is called I'm Not Your Token. This is the I'm not your token. I'm going to call it special edition because I am have to do a whole series about this that's going to relate to, you know, the kind of the Coon situation, the Karen situation. But here's the thing. Coons and Karens, they both do the same thing and they both ride the same coin, that token coin. So you could put the Coon on the one side and you can put the Karen on the other side. And so they, the, 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 the Karen, right? wants to use the black person as a token in corporate America or in their friendship or in their life, right? And the coon is happy being the token. So I sent some stuff out to my team trying to get some ideas for the book, you know, in the exact title, because I was going to call it Coons and Karens in the Corporate Kitchen. I, I need to ask my mentor and some other people, um, but I ha- I'm like getting it down to about five titles. But that's the basic line of it is that Coons and Karens are the same side 
of different of the or a different size of the same coin. They are the token, right? So the coon will let the Karen use them and the Karen will use the coon. But what happens is when you are not the coon and you speak up against the Karen, then that's when the Karen she come after you, right? And then the Karen is going to use the coon whenever possible. And let me just tell you, coonery is something that just makes me sick because the sick part about it is not even so much the impact that it has on other people, but to watch a person coon themselves, even if they just doing it for the money. And even if they going back home and they like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just getting and getting it for the, for the white folks. I'm just doing that. Even if you just doing it, you still selling out your people and you still a coon. So I want to fast forward to the Clarence Thomas, Well, it's not fast forward, but it will be fast forward one day when this happened, if he stays alive enough to see it, because I have to believe that karma and that the devil and that everything else is eating that motherfucker up inside for that shit that he did, that he's letting them use him like that, that he'd been letting the Republicans use him for 55 years now, maybe 60 years, because I guess he's in his eighties, but he'd been letting them use him as a coon and y'all see what coons and Karens have done together. So Coon Thomas and his Karen wife, Jenny Thomas, who helped plan the insurrection that they are eventually going to hang. And I'm using that word on purpose. They're going to hang Clarence Thomas for that, either posthumously or while he's still alive. They're going to hang his ass for it. They're going to put him in jail. Next thing you know, he's going to be a Jeffrey Epstein. OK, but that's how it's going to go down. Because they use him to hit, to wield their agenda. And that's the shit that I hate about Coons. And that's the shit that I hate about Coons and Karens when they be working together. Because that's the deadly shit they do. So white people, when y'all going to have enough? When you going to have enough? I had a, a conversation with a lovely black woman at the pool um, at my hotel. And the reason that she stood out to me is because she looks like another lovely black woman who I admire so much, who is a leader out here in these streets and been fighting and doing her thing and, and you know, whatever. But anyway, her, her, her son, <laughs> who is a couple years older than my daughter and they the same complexion, like beautiful chocolate black people, you know. I always been wishing I was dark skinned after I found out that my family thought it was something wrong with it. Then I wanted to be it because I always wanted to be whatever everybody hated for some reason because it just feels good because it's like it lets you know that you're doing something right and it's like I'm not doing nothing but living my life. Why are you hating me? I'm in the airport. I have on a white mask the KN95, everybody that has on a mask has on an N95, just like I do. Some people have the black ones. I uh, would like some black ones, but I, when I ordered the ones I ordered, I thought I ordered black and I didn't. And they end up sending me these green ones. And then when I was in the paint store, when all my house was being reconstructed and fumigated and all jacked up with all the fumes going through my house with the paint and everything, uh, I bought these ones from the paint store. And so anyway, that's all I had on was a white mask. I had on black slacks, a black t-shirt, and a black and white checkered blazer with black sneakers and glasses and earrings. Like I know that's how I normally dress. I didn't even have a necklace on. All these white people were staring at me in the airport. Why? I didn't have toilet paper hanging out my shoe. I didn't have toilet paper hanging out my pants or the uh, piece of the, um, what you call them thing? Like, why was anybody looking at me? I didn't have, I wasn't looking crazy. Because people, I don't know, whatever, they just want to hate on me for one reason. They didn't like that I had a, a nice expensive purse with me. I don't know. Or that I'm just a woman minding my own business. But the whole point is that, you know, there are so much. There is so much surrounded, right? to this experience of just trying to live, just trying to be. And, and when you have Coons and Karens and people who are just like, so they hate themselves so much that they looking at me in the airport, like mad at me. Why are you mad at me? I'm just minding my business. I'm not banging you with my bag. I'm sitting here and you walking by, you looking at me, you making a stank face just cause your dumb ass don't have a mask on. That's on you. I have 53 more years left to live on this earth. I'm, I'm only going to stay in America another six and a half damn years. I don't want to die from, from any kind of respiratory illness between now and getting the hell out of here. 
So who gives a shit if I have a mask on? And it was a white mask. It didn't say Black Lives Matter on the shit. So why the fuck is anybody staring at me? And even if it did say Black Lives Matter, because I can hear my liberal friends saying, well, so what if it said Black Lives Matter? You're allowed to have that. Yes, I am. And it's not about that. What it's about is why am I not allowed to just be? Why do people feel like they can try to like stare me down and intimidate me or, you know, try to invade my personal space? Why is that okay? So when when I can see the more aggressive tone, right, hype up since June 24th and it's only been two weeks and I haven't seen nobody in Moss and I don't follow a lot of bullshit I follow the real news I see what black people are doing and I try to stay away from black trauma news that's why I don't stay on TikTok because I can't deal with every day seeing a black person get killed by the cops because it happens every single day and I'm gonna let y'all pause on that it happens every single day. Every single day, black people get abused in this country. Every single day, black people get killed. Every single day, women and children get raped by grown ass men. Men with power, men with money, men with important jobs, men with badges, men with ID cards, men with seven figure salaries. Every day this happens. And 52% of women in America, that's the percentage. So why haven't the white women said, I'd rather have all women stick together and I'd rather preserve the childhoods and, and, and maybe a little bit of, I don't even know what to call it, health and safety for the next generation. I think about my daughter all the time. So me and this black lady at the pool, back to that story real quick. You know, we was looking at each other's kids. You know, uh, her son, he is married to a blonde head, uh, white chick. And she she was telling me how she had to tell her son. Her, her son had to tell his fiance. I think they just got married. You know, yeah, because it was a wedding picture. You know, uh, the dealio, like, listen, no matter what, I'm a black man. And you either ride with me or we, we can't we can't roll. And I'm like, yo, like, you know, like, like I feel that. Right. And it's like, right. This is, this is, this is life or death and white people y'all showing y'all don't have nothing. Y'all showing that y'all need them fucking guns because y'all don't have no guts. You don't have no guts. You need to stand up. You don't need guns to fight this fucking government and the shit they doing. You need your voice and you need your money. And that's all you need. And that's what black people need. We need your voice and we need your money. So I did a, I, I finally, <clears throat> I'm using my voice and I'm just going to let y'all know, this is a, an, a fact I have to accept and I'm, I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, I have to go get some more doctors situations about it, but I have a thing with my throat. So that's why my voice sounds like this. And it's going to sound like this, uh, when I'm on a mic like this, unless I've had a whole lot of tea. Um, and you know, I, it's a whole lot of uh, thing because I have something going on with my throat. But anyway, uh, what I do know also is that when I don't use my voice, my throat feels more closed and more congested and I could feel it getting blocked. And so I've had some things happen, you know, that takes me to the, I'm not your token episode that makes me know I got to speak the hell up so that my voice doesn't get even more impacted because whenever I'm, I am muffled, I know that my ancestors were choked. I've been choked and muffled many times by people who are abusing me or telling me to shut up metaphorically, physically, right? In all kinds of ways. And most of the people that have always tried to uh, mu muzzle me and shut me up has been the Coons and the Karens, right? It's been the black people in corporate America. And let me give you my definition of the modern day coon and you could take it however you want. But once again, this is me, right? And so I'm giving, I'm giving people information here. And this podcast is, you know, is, is called when white people have had enough because I got tips and strategies for y'all. And basically I'm helping you learn about yourself and I'm giving you what you need to know. And when you, you have had enough, you'll be able to take this information and run with it and do all kinds of stuff. So first and foremost, first thing you want to do is you want to share this podcast. You want to share it far and wide. You want to make sure you pass it along to your friends, to your uh, countrymen, <laughs> to your cohorts, to your colleagues, to your buddies, to your peeps. Okay. To your, to your crew. 
um, to the folks that you um, are close with and people that you care about, because I'm sharing information for the world. One of the things that I have realized over the last two years and damn, you know, I realized my um, conditioning and how it works, but it's all good. I know how white supremacy works and that's, you know, more stuff that I'll be sharing, but specifically it comes out in my, um, you know, my conditioning and how I show up. But what I want to tell you is what I'm doing right now is what I want to encourage you to do is lead, lead. You have a voice. You have something. If you can hear me right now, you got a damn iPhone or an Android or a Google phone or a laptop, you got some kind of way to connect to something and trust and believe when I get my other project off the ground, people who don't have a way to connect to something going to be able to connect to something because that's a whole nother thing. Because just to let you know, um, yes, I am the radical results mentor, right? For, uh, decision makers with real challenges, ready to meet the moment. Right. And that means that I advise and guide leaders and decision makers, you know, equity leaders, accessibility advocates, and people who are really serious about change. But beyond all that, Oh, I'm a techie y'all. I've been in the game since 1984 with my very first job. So I just did a post about that and on LinkedIn and, um, you know, that's what really started me off as a business consultant. And that's why I can claim the expertise that I have, you know, um, and be like, yo, I'm Vonda Page and I've been in this, in this thing for almost 40 years. Like that feels kind of scary to say, like I've been doing something for 40 years, but you know what? Hey. It's been 38 years and 38 years is closer to 40. <laughs> so <clears throat> it is what it is. So welcome again to this podcast. So first and foremost, you need to follow and like and share this podcast. You need to download it and you need to put it on your reminders. And I believe that is called subscribe. Boom. You also need to go to vondapage.com. Literally, that is where you're going to find everything about everything. I have to get on a good routine with my website and with my team to get this up and running. But uh, I had to make a lot of adjustments because that's what it's like. But because I'm a leader and I've learned to lead change. I've rolled with the punches and I'm so excited to tell you about that during the masterclass. People who know me um, a little bit, but people who know me really well, which is not that many people, but no, I've been through some shit, but those that have been around for the past two years, y'all know, and y'all, my ride and dies, yo, y'all know what it is. And this masterclass is going to be everything. Go to leader to legend exclusive.com. That's leader to legend exclusive.com hit the red buttons and sign up for the masterclass it is free it's three days you're going to get three lessons and out of that you're going to walk away with the very specific strategy and the very savvy skill that you need to hone the habits to harness the certainties of change to get the goals that you want it doesn't matter what they are it's all about The certainties of change, understanding how to harness those certainties because change is inevitable and we can't do jack about change. So white people, white men and white women, y'all, ugh, right now, y'all so dumb. It's got me so annoyed. Um, the stuff y'all doing is just so dumb. Y'all gave away your own autonomy. You want to see your 10 year old daughter get raped by your husband and then you just going to let her be pregnant. That's just so nasty. It's so disgusting. And you saying, well, your life is messed up. So bump her life. Oh, I just can't. We need some leadership. Y'all need to stand up. You got to stand up for yourself first before you can stand up for others. I made a post about that last week. I can't remember now who said it. (laughs) I think it was Maya Angelou. I mean, I follow, but it could have been, I don't know. It could have been Sojourner Truth. I don't know. I follow and I'm going to do much better when my future podcasts are going to be super produced and they're going to be perfect and they're going to be like bumping and my team is going to have every link and every everything like in and it's just going to be the show notes are going to be awesome and it's going to be everything and it's going to be perfect. And, um, and, and so when I get to that point, uh, you know, the music will fade in perfectly. I won't go off on tangents while I'm trying to give my, you know, ads to tell you about my amazing masterclass. But this is the realness, right? And people want real. They want authentic. That's why I was able to grow on TikTok. And I'll be back. All my TikTok followers in the Vondiverse out there, I will be back. Um, But I just, you know, I had to really focus, right, and dial in. And and that brings me to, you know, at the masterclass, right, I'm, I'm going to talk about three particular things, right? I'm literally going to talk about 
What does it look like to launch a real leadership legacy? Like you have to go beyond that, right? And, and what does it mean to go from leader to legend? And, and, and what does, what's my philosophy? My philosophy is that leaders learn change. And here I am 38 years later, learning and doing new things, right? And being out there, who would have thought that, you know, you could, you know, um, say a curse word and people wouldn't think you were a horrible person. I started cursing in first grade and my grandfather was calling me a sailor. And I was like, okay, well, you was a sailor. And he was like, well, I don't curse. And I was like, well, that's because you're trying to be white. Because I didn't realize that, yeah, my grandfather was trying to be white because he was traumatized because he was in the Navy. And my grandfather's beautiful, dark skinned black man, dark chocolate like my daughter, the black I wish I looked like. And I don't even know if that's some kind of messed up colorism shit in my head. I mean, I love myself and how I am, but I just feel like, you know, maybe that's the inner martyr in me. And I need to talk to my therapist about that shit. <laughs> Like, is that the, some inner martyr of me? Like I can take the abuse and I want to, I want to take on, you know, with my, my dark chocolate, uh, you know, um, Ken got to take on around this world because it's like the darker the skin, you know, the worse you get treated. And I, you know, didn't really learn and realize that until some different times in my life. But the times I know where I wanted to be dark skin was every time I saw a dark skin person getting abused. Because then people was like acting like I was a problem. And then I remember, and I, I said to one of my uh, good friends from high school, I said, you know, there was a light-skinned chick in high school that everybody thought we was friends. I said, she fucking hated me. She hated me. All the light-skinned girls hated me. None of the light-skinned girls was friends with me. None of them. The brown skin and darker ones was, but the light skin ones wasn't because I didn't act like skin enough enough. Light skin girls was supposed to act bougie, was supposed to be this, was supposed to be that. Yeah, I grew up middle class. I grew up college educated family. Yeah, I, I always had food. I had so much food that I, you know, you know, uh, was able to overeat and buy my own sweets and junk as a child. Right. And, and eat all kind of food out of boxes and bags, which is now why to this day, I hate food out of boxes and bags. I can't stand it. That's one of the reasons, whole bunch of other reasons. I got a whole bunch of whatever, but that's for a whole nother thing. But it goes back to, right, the kind of what, what coonery becomes. And coonery is a stress response. And, and, and I'm going to say Karenism is a stress response, but, but I don't want all my black DEI people to come after me because I'm not making an excuse, y'all. I'm not making an excuse because when you know better, you do better. Right. And I believe, right. That part of the reason that I'm called to this mission around leadership and I'm called to this mission around change leadership and learning change is that we have to get, uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable, but the discomfort is about learning because we so busy adopting whiteness and whiteness says we already know everything. The image of whiteness is we already know everything. I'm going to tell you, all I'm going to do a whole series about Seinfeld and I'm going to talk all about Jerry Seinfeld and his whole show and the spinoffs and what it did to our society. But if you watch Seinfeld, even if you start from the very beginning and you watch, this is white people in action and y'all laughed at it for nine years, 11 years, 10 years, however long the show went along. I laughed at it too, but I was living it and I was watching it. And that whole time I was saying, well, this isn't right. They're not going to let this keep happening in real life, right? Like this is not going to happen. And I'm watching the Reagan years go by. And then I watch, you know, uh, uh, George Bush and I'm watching everything. And then I'm like, 2014 I'm watching the whole I saw how you know in in 07 and 08 Barack Obama and I saw the undercurrent of of conservative politics because I've been watching politics I'm gonna remind everybody here literally since like 1973 74 since before I was in first grade okay Shirley Chisholm ran for president in 1972 Jimmy Carter became president okay he ran in in 76 he was my first president I followed his career um, I can I can go on and on about politics, and this is I guess is a political <laughs> show. This is a commentator. This goes in the commentary section, um, <clears throat> I guess. But when white people have had enough, right? You will recognize and understand that coonism and tokenism, and I'm gonna call it Karenism. I'm gonna call Karen coonism, 
Karenism and tokenism, I'm gonna put them together in this one thing and I'm gonna do a talk about it on LinkedIn actually. And and we need to talk about like what that looks like honestly. And my thing is this, I don't need to have anybody in the conversation, but I'm gonna invite people to join. Um, but hey, look for that conversation. But you know, this is the message for white people. When you have had enough, you will decide to take some action. So if you are a Karen in corporate America, if you are Karen out here on LinkedIn, if you are Karen out here in middle America, in rural America, in suburban America, in nonprofit, in academia, in higher learning, wherever you are out here, if you are, uh, you know, stepping to this, patriarchy thing and acting like something is is happening and something is wrong and you you know are the person that is treating black people like shit because that's the definition it's not about calling the cops it's about using your power and treating black people like shit so if you are doing that stop that and here's how you stop number one you have got to learn you have got to shut your mouth and start listening. That means you have got to follow black women, indigenous women who have been leading liberation work, who've been leading what y'all have called, uh, you know, anti-racism and y'all have called this and y'all have called this and y'all have called that, you know, uh, to take all of that. Okay. And, um, and, and co-opted it. Y'all need to follow people that's doing the real work. And it's tons of amazing people on TikTok. My recommendation is you get on TikTok and you type in people like Portia Noir, Black Girl Tragic. You type in, um, even a lot of the people like Ernest Grimm and, and, um, and, uh, Echo and these same people that's on LinkedIn, uh, a shiny, y'all need to follow them same people on TikTok because it's so much easier to absorb the content. And when you absorb the content, just shut your mouth. Just take your two lips and put them together. Put them together. Mm, mm, mm. Put them together. And then don't let any sound come out. That's all you do. Put your lips together. And then just hear. That's your number one step. And, and then as you hear when something make you feel some kind of way, Ooh, when you get like a, ah, you get a pinch, you get a, uh, you, your stomach hurts, your throat get dry. Uh, I don't know all the signs and symptoms, but look them up. Uh, when you start processing and you feel some kind of way, that is when you know you are growing. That's it. I'm going to only leave you with one step at a time because I know that this is hard and it's hard because you've been protected. It's hard because coons right like people that work in corporate america with these damn big jobs right protecting your feelings all damn day because you haven't had a candid real conversation right with somebody that cares and i care on, in a big way i care not only because i would like to live and be in peace and and be in harmony because i know that you know a podcast can't save america then they try pie save america <laughs> I was listening to them. I was listening hard. I was Pie Save America hardcore. I was listening to different people. Then they had my 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 guy on there, DeRay. So they was, you know, I they couldn't save America because they were still beating around the damn bush. Nobody is telling people in power what they need to hear. Nobody is telling the truth about what needs to be said. And what white people need to do, first and foremost, you need to listen to black people and you need to listen to black women and shut your mouth and listen. Listen to indigenous women, shut your mouth and listen. Period. You're not going to hear me say, listen to people. You're going to hear me say, listen to women. You know why? Because women are the ones who have lost our rights. Mic drop. Women lost our rights. Now, I live in Oregon. And I know how to fight, yo. <laughs> and I'm not saying that in a facetious way at all. But I live in Oregon. And so right now, you know, if I were to need an abortion, it, nobody's going to question that. But I also, you know, have money that I could uh, call up some people and I could be like, hey, can I come to your office because I need an abortion and somebody can give me one? I can get pills, right? Uh, I could drive to Canada, right? Um, 
and I'm 55 or I'm not 55. <laughs> I'm 53. Probably nobody's going to suspect I'm trying to get an abortion. <laughs> But I probably could get one, okay? And I'm not laughing because this is not funny at all. I'm laughing because I think it's funny that I, I have plotted out in my mind if I needed to get an abortion at this age, right? Because why is that a thing? And why would I have to worry about trying to get it? Because they get ready to outlaw birth control in this country. And the reason they're doing it, white people, is so that you they can birth more white people into poverty. It's plenty of black people in the poverty. They already know that. And that's why they won't let any black people, no matter how brilliant it is, they won't let us get ahead, won't let us buy houses, won't let us start business, won't let us have shit, keep burning everything down. So they know that that doesn't work anymore. So they don't want us to increase our population. They would rather us die off and they want to create new white slaves. But y'all so dumb, y'all not paying attention because you distracted. I get it. It's nice to have a Tesla. It's nice that your kids can go to private school. It's all of that is lovely. And I'm not begrudging nobody private schools. And I'm not even begrudging you a Tesla if you can afford it. But even though it's raping Africa and destroying millions of lives of black people. But my point of all of this is that you have to learn and you have to listen because what is happening is we're going further down. Like this is not a joke and, and white people don't seem to give a fuck. And here's the thing, black people, we going to survive the best we can. Yes, they still trying to kill us, but it's tons of black people that are lead, lead, leading black liberation movements. And that's saying to black people, let's get the hell out of here. Let's go to Africa. I'm already, my thing is already planned out. <clears throat> Because this country hates black people and no, nothing is going to happen in the next 20 or 30 years to fix it. So me and my offspring, we're not going to be any more generations born in this country. My daughter's going to be, her kids are going to be born somewhere else. She's not going to be no American citizen. So, you know, that is going to be more and more prevalent. So y'all can think that this whole go back to Africa, we want a white world, whatever, whatever, it's always going to be a slave class. But what y'all don't realize is that the slave class is getting bigger. The slave class is getting bigger. And now they need the slave class to vote. They need poor, white, uneducated, pregnant or soon to be pregnant or don't care if they own kid gets pregnant people to keep voting for their bullshit and that's what y'all doing so when white people have had enough you going to listen and follow black leaders you going to learn to step up you going to figure out what you need to do what your companies that you work for are doing who they are supporting and you going to start figuring your life out so thanks so much for joining um you know I was playing Kanye because can't tell me nothing I know y'all I've been around it since 1984. Not only have I been a business consultant, right? From that time forward, I've been in business and following business and consulting with business and leading and advising and guiding and coaching and training. So, hey, thanks so much for hanging out with me here on When White People Have Had Enough. I will see you soon. Living Corporate is brought to you by Doximity. Doximity is committed to fostering an inclusive and diverse work environment where differences are valued, practices are equitable, and employees experience a sense of belonging that allows them to bring their full, authentic selves daily. As medicine's largest network, there's an elevated level of responsibility to everything we do. We don't take that responsibility lightly and are committed to working towards a more equitable world inside and beyond our virtual office walls. So if you want to learn more about Doximity, go to your app store and type in D-O-X-I-M-I-T-Y. Again, that's D-O-X-I-M-I-T-Y.